All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another live Live the Fuel show here, at least live in the Facebook world. So I'm excited to bring back a repeat guest co-host multiple times over. Uh, but let's go ahead and give you a quick background on this gentleman. And actually, real fun, I'm just going to go ahead and do this right now. You might have seen me talk about this, Fat, a documentary, Very Bright Yellows. This is uh, a very successful documentary film we're going to connect on tonight because... I'm bringing on a new guest co-host, repeat guest host five times over, I think we're at right now. Let me give you a quick background. All right, his quote, you may have heard it before, because your good intentions have been stolen and I'm here to help you get them back. And that's part of a lot of behind this gentleman. Let me give you a lot of his bio here because he's done a lot, okay? He literally has built like sweat equity foundation behind his career, built from decades spent as a professional fitness consultant to the celebrities and beyond. Okay, he was formerly known as, I like to say, celebrity fitness trainer, as well as Americans, America's angriest trainer. He's become an accomplished public speaker. He's founder of the NSNG lifestyle that I live, no sugar, no grains. He owns that trademark, by the way, too. Best-selling author of Fitness Confidential, podcast host of Fitness Confidential Podcast. That's the new branding of that show. By the way, I, I think that averages only a million downloads a month or something crazy like that. He's also now co-founded Pure Vitamin Club, Pure Coffee Club and now NSNG Foods. And because we're not done yet, I already hinted, 2019 filmmaker of Fata Documentary. And now for tonight's podcast, we're going to talk about Fata Documentary 2, people, 2, airing January 1st, 2021. So without further ado, Vinny Tortorich, sir, welcome back. <laughs> when you say it like that, you, you, you make it sound like I've done a lot. Maybe a little, you know. It's a, a smidge. A smidge. <laughs> it's, it's odd to me, Scott, because I wake up every morning and I go to bed every night going, what else can I do? You know, it's um, it's weird. You know, I, I, I'm never satisfied. I'll never forget we hit a milestone early on because the first of those three companies you had mentioned, purevitaminclub.com, Andy and I, we had, we had hit a significant milestone sometime within the second year. And Andy called me up and he was like, basically, you know, just going, Oh, my God, can you believe we're here? Can you believe that this company is is real? And look at what we've done and look at what we've accomplished. And, and my attitude, and, and he was very upset by this. And, and now I understand, I, I didn't understand at the time, but he was upset because I was like, Yes. So what what's next? Let, let's keep moving. Let's let's hit the next milestone. And he got real quiet and he got really upset. And he goes, you don't seem to be happy with what we've done. And I see you're laughing about it, too, because you know how I am. Uh, my feeling in life has always been nothing is as old as the trophy you just won. You know, that that's done. Uh, I've never looked at trophies as being and, and by the way, back in my day, I'm, I'm very old now I'm 58. There were no participation trophies, you had to earn your rewards. It's not like today that I, I've had people tell me in their 30s, they'll go, Oh, I signed up for soccer and then decided not to go and be on the soccer team. And at the end of Little League soccer, they sent me a trophy for something I never just never had done. I, I'm way different. Even if I win an award, and I'm deserving of said award, I never, I never sit on that. It's I just look at it and go, this is already old. What's next? What can we accomplish next? You think Who that's just basically help? a childhood thing? Like that I, I think it is. Um, you you read the book. I mean, <laughs> It it does come from childhood, uh, and it, it, it'll never leave me. At least, um, I, I look. I had a great mom and dad, great family life. Um, I didn't do well with going to a parochial school where nuns kind of beat up on us, and physically, but also mentally. And the mental part is the part you never get used to. Um, I, I'll give an example of that, Scott, if 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 I if I could. Um, Absolutely. I noticed today, like if, if a kid dies, right, they'll, they'll have in the school grief counseling and all this kind of stuff. Man, I, I applaud that. I really do. Um, back when I was at Ascension Catholic, 
you know, you go from K through 12 with the same group of kids. Mm -hmm. So the kids, you know, in first grade, are the kids you're going to graduate with, a yeah, few yeah. people move away over time, a few more people come in over time. But the core group is the same group from day one until the day you graduate. And <clears throat> we had a very unique class in that um, we graduated in 1981. Before we graduated, five of us had died. Wow. Um, the first little girl, none of us really knew she was in first grade. we had only been in school for a few days. Um, and she was basically riding her bicycle on a quiet street with training wheels, lost control, went out into the street from the driveway and a car hit her. It was very tragic. Um, the next two, Ella and Amy, uh, we were going from seventh grade to eighth grade. They were hit head on. They were in a car with Ella's older sister and died tragically. Um, Charles, we were freshmen. He was duck hunting, hunting accident. So that was four. And number five was Louise. Charles and Louise, Ella and Amy, we were all very close. Um, Charles was a good friend. We played sports together. Louise, I was very close to. She was a very close friend. Um, she died of a brain aneurysm. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, she never missed a day of school, never complained of a headache, nothing. An aneurysm just popped in her head one afternoon. I was one of the few people to get to see her on life support before they cut the machine off, meaning the few kids from the class. I think maybe a handful, maybe a dozen of us, maybe eight of us got to see her. And in zero of those cases, that we have any sort of grief counseling. Think about that. Yeah. It was, you know, hey, Charles Becknell blew his chest out today in a duck hunting accident. Okay, back to class. Mm -hmm. Back to class. Let, you know, stiff up a lip, back to class. Louise died. Back to class. No big deal. Nothing to see here. I'm so glad that they do what they do today. But that's how different the world was. And that wasn't that long ago, that was 1981. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I developed this kind of stiff upper lip attitude in life. You know, life is not fair, you know. And I think because of that, and I've never talked about this in any podcast ever before right now. We've never talked and, about this. You've been on many times. <laughs> no, and you can see what's happening to me. I'm doing this. I'm, yeah. I'm holding myself now. It, it, up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it 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 really screws me up a bit when I talk about it. But um, it, it's why I think I have so much compassion for people, because I looked around at some point. And I went, you know what? I don't really have religion. I became an atheist, you know, because of the nuns. Go figure. And. I decided, well, what's it worth? What's what's life worth? And what I figured out was you got to help other people. You know, we're all in this together. You know, like when you 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 and I were first getting started out before you were even working as part of our company, you know, you would call me up and ask me to do a podcast. I was like, Yeah, sure thing. Whatever you want. Anything I can do to help you. You've always been that way with any podcast. Right. So yeah, and, and I think that's kind of become my thing, you know, um, you know, everybody's good intentions have been stolen. And um, I'm going to just waste my life or use my life. It, because we're wait, you know, we're wasting time the whole time we're here sure. from the time we're born, you know, we're expiring. And um, it's like, while we're here, shouldn't we just help each other and be more comfortable? And, and by the way, in, in a further extension of that, shouldn't the country be that way too? You know, our country, the world, you know, you see someone needs help, you just do it. You, you don't ask for anything in return. And that was, yeah, one was go on. I said it was the way I was raised. I, yeah, you know, I mean, we're not, we weren't heavily religious either. It wasn't this whole do, it, you know, that whole do on to others. Yeah, right. I mean, okay, well, if you expect people to treat you well, you treat them well. If somebody needs help, now granted, you don't expect help in return, but if you get a chance to help somebody, I truly believe that sooner or later it comes back to you. So, yeah. yeah, and I don't even look for the coming back. Of course, look, I'm, I'm a very lucky man. I, I have a wonderful relationship. I have a, a, you know, 
a great stepdaughter. I, I, I got a lot of great things, you know, and um, so I, I don't worry about the I don't worry about things even coming back. It's like, well, we're here to help each other out. That That's all it is. Right? That, that's why societies formed to begin with, you know, we're, we're greater in numbers than we are, you know, as a just a unit. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that that gets enough. I, I think we pay too, too short a shrift to that in the world today. I didn't mean to bring it down this far this early in the no, show. I, honestly, Vinny, like that's why you and I have always connected so well. And I became a fan of yours years ago before we ever, like you said, before we started working together and, and helping each other out and stuff it was like, dude, the guy just says it how it is. It's the way I was raised. I grew up on a farm just like you did, maybe different yeah. type of farm, but uh, granted I'm only 43, but still a lot of the fundamentals that I could tell built you and raised you and your siblings and your family is very similar to my upbringing. And that's why I think I've always connected well with you because I get it. And yeah. one thing I tell people all the time is like, if they're new to your show, which is funny, because we I joke around all the time, like people still have never heard of your show. And I'm like, dude, the show's huge. Like, what are you talking about? But that's fine. You know, there's, there's, there's millions of people on the planet, it takes time. But yeah. the thing I tell people, I'm like, listen, when you listen to his show, just expect a straight shooter. That's why I respect him. They're like, well, what do you mean by that? I'm like, a straight shooter is a very generic term. I was like, well, he's not going to pull punches. He's going to say it how it is. You and Adam Carolla have that in common, right? Just keep it real. Like, don't hold back and just be yourself. And there's no, there's nothing fake there. You, Anna, you know, the whole, the whole crew. Anytime, whenever you bring people on the show, I think you relax a lot of people. And I told people for a long time, and I told you this too, because I'm, I'm trying to finish the book, you know, because like if I try and catch up to you and have my first book too, but it's like, guys, like, just keep it simple <laughs> yeah, and, and stay real. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> you, you're right, Scott, you know, it, uh, you just keep doing things, you know, I'm glad you're doing a book. And, um, you know, you'll see what that's all about. And you'll get it out there and you'll be pushing it. And um, I can't wait to read it, by the way. How, how's it all coming? Uh, I'm literally going back and forth with a book cover guy now uh, with my editor. And it's literally I just have to finish reading the final edits. And she's like, Scott, she's like, the only thing holding us back now is you. <laughs> so I if you've been in that position, because we're going to self publish, you know, so it's like, okay, well, it's, it's all on my shoulders, because I have all this free time. <laughs> Not yeah, the self publishing part, you know, I, you know, people ask me all the time, uh, even um, what's her name? Um, uh, the guy who did the book, the, the Canadian who did the book, um, doctor, his daughter, um, Peterson. Oh, yeah, the Petersons, Yeah. Yeah, even Michaela, Michaela called me at one point, because she had been on the show. And, and she, she said, Hey, you self published, and you did really well with it. Would you suggest I do that? And I said, Absolutely, I would, especially if I'm you. I mean, your dad wrote a number one bestseller. Why aren't you talking to him about it? And she goes, but he didn't self publish. Oh, you I, know, I so, he did. No, I think I I guess he did. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. But yeah, we got on the phone and talked about it. And I gave her every tip I had. And, and I can't tell you the number of people I've given tips to. Some people I told them to go with a publisher, I said, Look, if you don't, if they're willing to give you money, and you don't have an audience online, when you start, yeah. it's going to be tough to get people to buy that book. Yep. If you have an audience. And if you are uh, Scott Mulvaney, you have an audience, plus you can, <laughs> you can get me to bring you on my show. And probably a dozen other people to bring you on their show. <clears throat> It'll move your book right up to the top of Amazon and audible and everywhere else. So that once it's there, other people are going to find your book. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's what we did with fat a documentary, you know, uh, the pre sales meant more than, you know, anything else, because when it opened on iTunes, boom, oh, it was right there. Yep. Yeah. And, and again, to refresh anybody who's a longtime listener, if you guys remember, like, that's how Vinny and I actually started working together was, you know, your, your marketing person or whoever that was dropped off, they, they, they couldn't handle maybe they couldn't handle the pressure of crowdfunding. I don't know. Um, whereas I'm a fan of it. And I sent I sent you and Serena a bunch of tips that I, I just knew would would hopefully help you. And then boom, next thing you, know, you guys are calling me from the car like so want to work together. <laughs> so I was like, sure. So and the rest is history. Um, but, but, but Scott, let, let's take it back a step too. Uh, you know, Folks, it's, I didn't just call Scott out of the blue. I didn't know who Scott, I, it, I wouldn't have known who Scott Mulvaney was. 
Scott made me trip over him. Uh, he was a fan who he saw was coming through uh, Pennsylvania or something at one point and said, Hey man, let me buy you a drink. Let me buy you a scotch. And <laughs> okay. I'm not going to stop someone from I mean, buying me a scotch. In Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. That's and then we were sitting there with, with me and Andy. Uh, I, we were there doing coffee. It was the beginning of pure coffee club. That's how long ago it was like over three years ago. Yeah. And um, if you want to know how things happen now, Scott didn't come and go, Hey, give me a job. He just came and said, Hey, let me buy you a drink. And, and when someone's, as you drink, the, the first thing you do is so, so tell me about yourself. What do you do? Yeah. I do marketing. I do online marketing. I'm this guy who does this. Yeah. I just made a mental note. And I think we called you a few times about other things, right? We had spoken because every time I had a question, I went, wait, I know a guy up in Pittsburgh that may know the answer to that. You know, I get pissed all the time too, because actually we're on the eastern side of the state. So I was even closer to Philadelphia to come meet you, which is why there was no yeah. excuse for me not to go meet you guys because I'm I'm right here in Allentown and it's only an hour north of Philadelphia. So that's that's part yeah. of my little tip there. People listening to this is like, guys, like if you have a chance to connect with somebody, go old school, man. I mean, I know with the whole COVID thing right now and all that, but like <laughs> try and connect with people. <laughs> well, yeah, COVID won't be forever. And you know, he he went out of his way just to come over and say hi and shake our hands and and um, say, look, big fan of the show. I, you know, I can't tell you how much now look, almost 10 out of 10 times, nothing's going to come of it. But I remembered Scott, and I remember he does this for a living, he, he probably gave me a card, I had some information to find you and, and then I started talking to you when we were trying to crowdfund the movie. And yeah, the woman we had working with us, you know, made us think that she knew what she was doing. And I had no reason not to think she knew what she was doing. And um, I, I had some differences with her. And I, I brought up those differences. And she, she literally, just to keep the short story very short, she just dropped the ball. And she she fired us in the middle of the night. Well, in the dating world now that I guess a popular term is uh, she ghosted you. <laughs> So I, I yeah, I, well, right? <laughs> no, ghosting means you just go away without telling anyone. Gotcha. She wrote me a, a scathing letter and dropped it like the day that we like the funding was starting. Yeah, you, Peter Pardini, like Serena, everybody's like ready to rip the lid off and you know get because that's what you have to do. It's it's a all out race to the finish. You got to be on your game hourly, if not daily. You know, so and I was that's why I was surprised when you called me. I was like, what? Like day of? What? Yeah, like she she dropped us like we were going live that morning. She dropped us the night like at midnight. Yeah. I was like, what kind of evil human being will do? You know, it's like, does she not get what we're trying to do? You know, and um, she had told me several days before that, that I, I probably wouldn't make $20,000, you know, by doing this. And, and to your credit, Scott, um, and to Serena's credit and everyone that worked on it, and Peter, uh, we got to over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, since you're saying, that, I'm going to screen share real quick. Here yeah. is the Indiegogo campaign page. Anybody can go see this right here, right now, from the very first movie. Yeah, crowd. Well, it says two. It says two hundred twenty-one thousand five hundred, but several several people gave us a lot of money on the side. Like they wrote to me and said, "Hey, I was I was getting ready to send you twenty five hundred bucks. I was getting ready to send you five thousand bucks." And this kind of thing, which we had a lot of people who did that within the program, but Indiegogo takes a percentage of that. It is. And these people said, why should we pay the percentage? Can we just give you this check? Which I thought was tremendous. I, I, did, I, was, I was very impressed with the amount of money and also the amount of people, like the super fans, I'll call them, yeah. that did that on the side. You're like, oh, by the way, I know you're tracking these numbers, but FYI, this happened and this happened, and we had it on the down low. And I was like, "Whoa, what? Oh, wow, that's yeah, that's, that's a committed fan." So it, it was it was crazy because we were only looking for a hundred. I think we we asked for one fifty, and we said we said that if we get to one hundred, I would you know I I committed to put fifty thousand in, which yes. for me is an incredible amount of money. So I told Peter, I said, look, if we get $1 over $100,000, we're going to go ahead with this. And I will slowly put money in. But I can't go past 50,000. Again, shout out to Peter again, for anybody who's never heard about fat, right? I mean, Peter, yeah. 
anybody who can figure out how to create a, a legit, professionally done documentary film for only 150 grand, I'm air quoting that because you guys went way over budget because you're that committed to this project. And again, we haven't even started talking about fat too coming out. Like this is just how much foundation is behind fat. That's why I loved working on this project. By the way, real quick, Vinny, shout yeah. out to uh, Kurt. I don't know how you say, is it Leopard? Leopard? Le is that how you say his name? Leopard, I, I say Leopard, but. Leopard, Leopard, yeah, he just commented on the video saying, Vinny is so sincere. He's been a big part in my health. So what's up, Kurt? <laughs> so. Yeah, Kurt's a good guy. I've actually done consults with Kurt. Um, I've met Kurt, I, I met him in Kansas. Kurt is one of those guys that I think if he lived anywhere near me, we would like hang out because we're about the same age, same sensibility, that kind of deal. Kurt, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to start calling me. I don't need another friend. But if we lived near each other, um, I'd probably hang out with that dude. He commented on one of my, uh, I, I do time lapse videos now in my garage when I'm working out on the rower. So I've been posting yeah. a lot of uh, like 10,000 like 10,000 meter interval workouts, just messing around with some different things. Cause once you own the rower, right? It's, it's so much fun. But he commented <laughs> the other day, he's like, I, I had the wattage posted or something. And he's like, well, I'm old. So here's mine. <laughs> and I was like, dude, we're only as old as we want to be, but he definitely pulled that card. I thought I was cracking up. So. Yeah, he, he's doing well. Uh, he got himself a roar. I think I've sold more roars for concept two this year than anyone else. Oh my God. If yeah. you had any kind of affiliation with them, that would have been awesome. I don't think they realized the value. I don't think, shared they, yeah, I don't think they do affiliations, but it'd be I, I've been on the wait. I was on the waiting list since July until I finally got yeah. one. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so you know, we could go off on 20 different tangents, but yeah, the, the movie did well. Uh, we got the money. I ended up putting that fifty thousand. I was just I put that plus into it into the first movie, because we really wanted it to be. We wanted it to be a special movie, and I saw what we were doing while we were doing it. And when it came down for color correction and sound and none of that stuff is cheap, man. It's like this guy needs ten thousand. That guy needs twelve thousand. So I started pulling my money out of savings realizing or thinking I would never get it back. And that's what brings us to the next movie fat a documentary Two. Yeah, I, I said to myself, because when Peter and I shot this, we overshot the first one. You know, we we put me you know, in fat one, I'm sitting by a fireplace and a big chair. And we also shot me against a different background with a sweater on. That was I, all I shot that because like you, you, you sent me the behind the scenes, I got to go watch it. And I was like, Yeah, I was like, oh, he had an entire second set of outfits that we never saw. <laughs> That's right. We only saw me in the in the one outfit. I was like Cher. I was doing costume changes. And, and it's kind of hard when you're thinking about doing two documentaries in the first one, right? True. So I shot all of my parts like that because I knew that we couldn't tell the whole story in 90 minutes. True. You know, so we did the history. And we had this whole second thing sitting around. And like everything else I do, you know, nothing is as old as that trophy you just won. That movie did amazingly well. And lo and behold, I got my money back. Plus a few bucks. And I went, okay, I feel like I'm playing with house money now. I know that people will buy a movie that I will put out. But the question is, can I put out a better movie? Um, and that question became even bigger in my head when I realized that I couldn't get Peter Pardini again. Um, so uh, Peter was a con a consultant. I was going to say a consult. Mm -hmm. He was a consultant on the second movie. Whenever I needed anything, uh, Peter was there. Um, we because he knew intimately what what was there, I had to use a whole different uh, editor, because as you know, I'm, I have two left feet when it comes to anything electronic. Um, Nick Pierce came in. And I just directed it, and uh, pulled it together. And Nick would splice together whatever I wanted him to splice together. Um, I didn't think the movie was going to look anywhere near as good as the first movie. Uh, but Why did you I, think that? Because you guys obviously recorded all the content around the same time. Because I I'm now that. directing by myself. Oh, and I, I guess it, you know I didn't have confidence in me. Maybe uh, you know because I'm not a movie guy. We are. I'm a story guy. Yeah. Go on. 
I said we are we are guilty of being our own worst self critics. Um, well, but look, I never went to movie academy school, whatever. Um, but I do know how to tell a story. Hell, I wrote a best selling book and I tell a story. I've I've done seventeen hours, seventeen hundred hours of podcast, plus maybe even eighteen hundred hours plus of podcast without a single note in front of me. So if I can't tell a story, I don't know who can. Mm -hmm. So I said, Okay, use your st storytelling skills and do this pie, just do this movie. And that's what we did. Um, so there you have it. Now, Scott, you've seen that you've seen the whole movie, right? I did you luckily uh, sent me the link that nobody can see yet. So, so uh, which okay. actually was great. I'm glad you did that because I didn't get to do that the first time. And I, I take our time together very seriously and professional. So it was great to be able to see it and then see what you guys pulled off already. It's yeah. super cool because you're right. It's, it matches up very well to the first one. I was so blown away. Uh, I was like, wow. All right, man. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no offense. Peter Pardini, you are a magician. If when you, when you watch this, uh, or listen to this podcast, but it is super cool to see them honor the, the content, you know, that Peter helped you do in the very beginning and pull off a second rendition. It's, it's amazing. Well, Peter's, you know, even though he's not in this movie, his stamp is in there because we did the, the different parts the part one part two, because it helps you tell the story. And um, we did a deeper dive because look, I'm working off of what people tell me every day. You know, what about these vegans? And what about this, you know, this fake meat? Isn't it kind of good for you? And shouldn't I be eating soybeans and all this kind of stuff? And we answer that in spades in spades it was so i knew you were going to dig deeper and then again as a farm kid who knows too much now you know uh, from my yeah. childhood and thanks to you and other great influencers like nita ty schultz and, and, and i'm like and gary Ta Taubes and everybody else and dr drew and it's like man yes telling the truth even deeper like fat fat i think ripped the lid off the first one yeah, that's why I think that's why I love what you guys did. This is like we needed some deeper dive on some very, very key components that people don't. I don't think even people who watch the first fat truly fathom how deep this goes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, look, the first one is a history and you can't deny history. You, you can't say, well, he lied about that. Well, no, we, we took the actual history of veganism in the first movie and said, look, this started in 1860 when a, a crazy woman had a premonition. Bottom line, it came out of whole cloth. It was made. It was just materialized out of whole cloth. Was that now 160 years ago? Is that the math? Or more, like 100 and yeah, like well, yeah, 160 years. So 1860s, that would be 160 years ago. Wow. And I, I always tell people this: if someone came to you today, Scott, if you had come to me today and said, "Hey, um, listen, last night <clears throat> God came to me while I was sleeping." I, I would try to order a 5150 and get you, you know, put into a hospital for, you know, three days on a three day hold until they could figure out what's wrong with you, right? right? right. You would be considered crazy. <clears throat> we have homeless people all over this country now, you know, because they, they belong in a home somewhere. We know they belong in a home somewhere. But these people in LA, it's one of the reasons we have to leave. People would run up to you on the street and start yelling in your face. And we see it now, people are getting stabbed. And, yeah. and th these people have nowhere to go. It's very, very sad, right? But 160 years ago, a crazy woman said, God came to me in a dream. And instead of locking her up and trying to observe her, they went, oh, really? What did God have to say? God said, don't eat meat. God said, don't eat anything with a face. And that there started an entire vegan existence. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's impressive. I got to say this: it's impressive that it's spanned such a length of time, right? I mean, that's, right. so I guess kudos to them for being able to keep the farce going as long as it's done. And and I I, I love I I want to bring this up for our listeners sure, too. Sure. Sure. You and I both agree on a lot of things. And I always tell people, I agree with you. I love how you put it too, because you've had, you've worked with clients who live a, uh, those other alternative lifestyles, I'll call them, but you can't beat the science. Like that's why religion and science have never gotten along. And it's like, it has become a bit of a religion. I respect uh, my, my friends and colleagues who do choose to experiment with those lifestyle choices because they care. I get it, but you can't unwind millions of years of evolution and the science behind what our bodies actually need. And right. that's where 
again, pull the passion aside, the heart out of the situation and just get down to brass taxes of what we need biologically. And it's like, man, we need more documentaries like these to open people's eyes, not, not try and drag the whole thing through the mud. It's just, just open your eyes, wake up. So there's something and Scott, I don't want you to say what it is, but right at 44, I think it's 44 minutes and 51 seconds. I have one of the, the and by the way, I don't have anything against anyone who becomes a vegan, right? But I do have something against these so called experts who claim to be telling you the truth. And they're not and right at I think it's 44 minutes and 51 seconds. There's a vegan doctor. Don't say which one it is. Are you looking it up right now? I, I, I just, I just, because it's still queued up. So I right. just fast forwarded and looked at it. I'm like, I know who you're talking about. It's the one that's on the dais and he's sitting next to Clapper and all that. Yeah, yeah. The guy just spews out the world's biggest lie. It's just, he's just lying through his teeth to the point where the other two vegan doctors who are sitting next to him, they're just, they just look down at the their heads drop. Yeah, they're like, Oh, I can't believe he's saying this. He, he's lying. I mean, and just the world's it. biggest lie. And they're like, Oh, why did you have to go there? Yeah, like you just you just you just burned our position. And, and yeah. no one calls him on it, by the way. Yeah, no one's as a matter of fact, if you if you go in with the clip, it, it shows what was a, one of the doctors at the end of the table said, Thank you for that. Thank you for what for the world. My grandmother can tell you that what he's saying, my grandmother made it to sixth grade, yeah. right? She never got to go past that because they had to work. They were very poor. My grandmother can tell you, oh, wait, that's not right. What that guy's saying right now is not just the opposite, but it's not the polar opposite. It's like you're sitting there going, you're not just saying the opposite thing and trying to make it a truth. But the way you're saying it, it's it's the most amazing. And by the way, aren't you impressed that I knew it was exactly at 44 minutes and 51 seconds? Uh, it is your movie, though. I mean, and you know, you, you probably couldn't wait to stick that section into that. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to put it in there three times. I wanted. I said, Peter. Can, oh yeah, can you repeat? Yeah, like yeah. three and four or five times so that people can see just how. But there's so much stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I want everyone to know this, Harvard. You are not safe. Nope. In this movie. Nope. And I, I, I'll say that. I didn't want to bring that up. I wasn't sure if you're going to bring that up. Oh, uh, uh, Harvard, Walter. you're not safe. Walter Willett, you're not safe in this movie. And yeah, we're going, we're, we're, we're all telling those guys, you. all those guys. Yeah. Yeah. McDougal, get ready, pumpkin. <laughs> get ready. Get ready. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I love about your movies is that if you actually look, that's why, again, you had such praise on the first fat because you actually brought all the science into it. You, it's like, listen, guys, I don't even have to make this stuff up. You guys found all the historic uh, commercials, the old video clips that like you can't, you don't need to make anything up. Like, guys, this is literally from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah. I'm not making this up. He, he or she clearly said this, and it's clearly erroneous and has no science backing it. So all I'm going to do is take that clip, put it right in front of your face so you can't forget about it again, and then explain to you why it's wrong. Yeah. It, he, they kind of made your job pretty easy for you a little bit. <laughs> and this time it was even easier. Yeah, you know, it was just easier. You know, it, it, it almost felt, you know, I sometimes when I'm doing this, I feel like, you know, I'm a cat just kind of batting a mouse around. Yeah, before I kill it, you know, I'm just batted around for a bit. And by the way, if you think I'm done, oh, no, I'm shooting, I'm going back, I'm shooting, I'm going back to the beginning again. Uh, we're going to start shooting in probably you, you had, from the first fat. You guys said you had so much content that you could easily do two or three movies, I think minimum, yeah. right? Yeah, but I want to start going since then. There's more information. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting ready to do in the third, we're going to stick on the third one. We're going to call it something else because I came up with a really great title. Uh -oh. And I don't want to say what it is, but we have the title, you know, See, what, look at looking at your smirk on your face. You're having way too much fun. I mean, which is great. I mean, it's like you guys are having a blast. I'm sure Serena's bunch when you guys go, I'm sure Serena probably sat there and giggled like a little schoolgirl. Like, oh, that's gonna be so much fun. So, oh, and you know, what's amazing about this. I, I, let me go back a bit because I'm, I, you're right. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> I was going to put this movie out myself and just put it on YouTube and say, you know, figure out how to charge for it on YouTube <laughs> and put it out myself. But I felt like I owed 
uh, the Gallagher's, you know, just let them know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I called Brendan, uh, the Gallagher's own Gravitas. And, Gravitas and, Ventures, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes. Gravitas. We're the number one documentary of all time on Gravitas and look at the documentaries they've done. Scott, uh, I, you, I mean, so we've literally beaten every other documentary they helped distribute. <laughs> we're the number one documentary. Like Kill, all of it. Yeah, all of it. We're the number one. And the one about the guy who's juicing across the country, all those vegan, uh, we're the number one documentary of all time on Gravitas, right? So I have a great relationship with the Gallagher's who own the company. It's two brothers. Uh, there are two entertainment attorneys that started this company. And um, Brendan and I become, you know, pseudo friends. We don't get to hang out because we don't live near each other. But Brendan, you know, I was told when we first went to Gravitas with the first movie, Brendan is the tough brother, the other one's the nice brother. Mm. And don't expect Brendan has been nothing but a sweetheart. And um, he invited me up to the suite to go watch a football game once and before this whole thing happened, the whole you know, it was last year. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's, it's funny, because I said, you know, I said, Serena, should I just send this to Brendan? And, and I wrote him a nice note. I said, Brendan, here is a link. If you want to watch it, I'm sure it's not anything you're going to be interested in because I've sent a half dozen other people who have made documentaries right. to them and they haven't accepted any of them. Oh, wow. So, so you yeah, tried sharing the love. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people have come to me and, and hey, you think you can get the, you know, Brendan and company and Gravitas. And I was like, yeah, I'll just send it to them. So they don't just take anything. And I was like, they're not going to take this movie. So I just said, Hey, Brendan, here's a link. I'm going to put this out myself. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know this is what I'm doing. Uh, thanks. Hmm. Three hours later, and not, three not hours, 24 hours, <laughs> three hours. Now that's significant because this movie is 89 minutes long. So Brendan must have popped it in right away. Ah, okay. And watched the whole thing. And within three hours, he called and he goes, I don't think you understand this movie is better than fat. Nice. And we have to have it. And I said, I'm, I'm Brendan, I'm not. I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm just going to put it out myself. And you know, it's COVID. I don't know. And he's like, Okay, what do you, you need a better deal? <laughs> and I'm, do you have a better deal? <laughs> can, you, can you get me some of this money back? And he was like, No, I don't think you understand. We can beat your last movie. We can beat it. He goes, the, this movie he's already predicting this stats are going to blow fat. I'll call it fat one fat one mm -hmm. out of the water. Yeah, the original fat. He he okay, thinks I, that this movie can beat it, and I got that was shocking. And the reason I'm telling, there you go. Now we have matching hats on. There we go. All um, right. Got a hat up for fat too. Here, here's the significance of that. Once you start going with these guys, you got to get all the attorneys involved to make sure that everything is copacetic, right? You got to make sure that nothing in there is a lie because nobody wants to get sued. Right. So everything they go through every minute, every second of the movie. And if anything gets flagged, they come to you and go, where did you get this from? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't believe, you know, the attorneys said, wow, this was all easily documented. Yeah. You know, this is, a, you know, everything you have, th there's not one lie, no twist. Uh, to give you an example. Uh, if you watch like what the health or something like that, they'll say one egg is like smoking a three packs of cigarettes a day. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. And, you know, I don't know how they push that through or how no one goes after them on that because it's clearly a lie. Or when they say an egg, yeah. can, like, you know, everything you have, th there's not one lie, no twist. Uh, yeah. To give you an example. I, I was hearing my voice there. What happened? Oh, I'm getting your comments up from your fans right now. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. I heard my voice back. Um, okay. So anyway, um, they were like, wow, all of this is you, you, we were able to sign off on all of this. We, we've never seen it. And it's because everything you can easily document it, you could go and find that. And by the way, you don't have to go very far to find the clips. We added the clips like when I say something that a vegan doctor says, it's like, hey, don't take my word for it. Watch this clip. And you're sitting there going, I can't believe this guy just said that. Right? It, it's gonna be wow. If you think I'm hated online right now, by oh, oh my you god, already get, you already get hate stalked. Is that a term? Hate stalked? I don't know. <laughs> hate stalked. I, I feel like 
the stuff you've done over what eight years of podcasting now probably yeah nine eight, eight years of podcasting you have developed new ways for people on twitter to hate you like yeah. I, you, I think there should be like a guinness record of like twi twitter hate or a tweet hate or i don't know we could come up with some new terminology <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, they called it doxing for a while, and they do whatever all of it is. It's yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, I'm I'm happy with it as long as I'm telling the truth. You know, I'm not look. I'm not going to lie to people. Here, here, here are the facts. Here's what's going on, and, and so be it, right? Yeah. Well, again, because again, here's the thing: you got people like veganism. That's one of the biggest reasons why I love fat too. Like you've. Again, I'm not I'm not hating on vegans. I'm like, I'm sorry. A lot of your prime influencers who preach this and put a whole other movies of pure lies out. Uh, I'm not even going to give them any any screen time or air time of their names, um, especially this past year <laughs> when yeah. yours came out. I was like, guys, you're you're literally preaching on a broken record, and there's no updated science to reinforce anything that you're saying. Whereas nowadays here going into 2021, because again, fat two is going to go live January 1st as reminded people watching and listening to this, we're already pre-ordering on iTunes. Yeah. I'll have the links on this video when we're done in case people haven't done it yet. But it's like, wouldn't you think to update your scientific research to reinforce this? Because we have it, <laughs> you well, know, well, but they can't, they can't yeah. because the, the, the research that they're going off of is also 20 years old. <laughs> Well, not only that, but it's the same research we use to show that they lied about the research. <laughs> you can extrapolate anything from anything that, you know, that you could pull up any lie from anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and look, I mean, and when you, you know, like that movie Game Changers came out and people were, what about Game Changers? Well, what about it? You know, they didn't even try to cover up the lies. Number one, they said that Schwarzenegger was a, um, a vegan. Yeah, good, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah that never happened. You mean one of the world's biggest drug users is a vegan now? No, he opened up his fridge and showed us that he's eating eggs and meat and everything else. He's not a vegan. He's not even close to a vegan. They just plugged in a famous name and a famous face, probably right. by paying him something to do it. I mean, well, he's good friends with the guy who put the money behind the pea protein. You know, um, you know, I could go on and on and on about how weird that movie is. They said that this guy, this vegan, is the strongest man in the world. He was never the strongest man in the world. You can easily go Google that and realize that this guy has done nothing. Now, is he a really, really, really strong guy? Yes. Yeah. But he's the never been for that possible title. Tried to, but has never held the title. Right. Not even close to it. Right. And I, I can't confirm or deny this, but my understanding is, and by the way, I'm not saying he is that he's done drugs for a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and still he's not the strongest man in the world. Um, a lot of the athletes that they said were the best athletes out there were not. They're just not. Right. Um, and they don't talk about the excessive amounts of supplementation you need to be able to sustain that lifestyle as an athlete. I mean, I've spent years in the CrossFit space and used to coach and train in it too. And there's a friend of mine, she now owns her own facility and everything else. And when I first met her, like I was one of her first trainers. Now she's an owner trainer and she's an amazing athlete, but right. I've, I've never gone back and asked her. But when she showed up, she had a backpack with all the vegan buttons all over her backpack. Right. At the gym. And I was like, you know, I, I wish you success with that. I mean, she was, she was doing it for nice reasons. She wasn't the crazies. And, but I said, we'll see how long that lasts or, you know, before you become a Cheegan, you know, to maintain yeah. your, your fitness goals, or you're going to be spending a ton of money on supplementation. And, and the supplementation just doesn't do the same as red meat. Sorry, it just doesn't. And speaking of Cheegans, a lot of the people in that video, and that's why I think a lot of the Cheegans won't come after me because I have proof on a few of these people, yeah. like actual proof. Anna Vocino actually has proof on one of them too. <laughs> you know, so come after us and we'll, we'll just suss you out. That's why they leave us alone because you know, oh, you got some super fans commenting like crazy right now on your videos. Well, do they have any questions or not questions, but actually just people giving you testimonies. By the way, Andy's upset. Uh, he no one ever gave me a hat. Andy, I was a paid crowdfunder and I paid for this hat, among other things. I was a heavy supporter of the crowdfunding campaign. So, Andy, you have to know people to get a hat. Uh, <laughs> 
I tell you what, Andy, whenever we do ever unpack those pods and I get to my clothes again, because I've been living out of a suitcase for well over a year now, yeah, I will give you a hat, sir. I go. will give you a hat. I think Andy's earned at helping you run all these companies. Yeah. But uh, oh, man, he, he runs time. him. He doesn't help me. I help him. He's running the company. I got to give a shout out to this guy, James Febo. He is local right here. He and I have trained together. He's now just become his own uh, trainer now. Guy has gone through an amazing yeah. transformation. Shout out to James. But he's been a his comments here. Great stuff. Been a fan for a long while. He and I, like one day in the gym years ago, was like, oh, hey, man, I think I know your name. And next thing you know, we're talking about you and no sugar, no grains. And I was like, well, small world. <laughs> wow. And then you got Robin Do Dobbins. Uh, so excited for fat too. Uh, Matthew Gust Gustafson, um, four years, MSNG. Vinny changed my wow. life. Thank you, sir. Just thank you. So I, I had to at least give you a few cameos for your fans there because and that, that's the beauty of this too. Is like, I, I got to remind people, we're talking about fat too. We're yeah. fat hats and all this stuff. But again, people don't underestimate the power of crowdfunding. I, I told people from the very beginning, the very first movie, I'll hold it up here again, fat, nice, big, yellow, you know, bright, you can, you can get it in physical form, but you can just stream it. But people paid for this. You, yeah. you did put some money out of pocket, but in the end, the people stepped up and the people put their money in $5 here, yeah. $2 here, $10 here, hundreds of thousands of times. Yeah. That's proof that people want the truth out there. So. Yeah, and that's why the second movie is coming out. And, you know, I just hope that we get the same kind of result on the second movie that we got in the first movie. What are you laughing about? What, what are they? Andy. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's Andy's like clearly just running our businesses isn't good enough, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and Rob was so happy that we gave her a cameo. She's boop, boop. She's commenting. That's what she, she made me giggle, actually. So shout Who's out to Robin. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, Robin Dobbins. Yeah. Cool. So, Hi, Robin. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if she's been on your consults or not. So I uh, don't remember. I, I still love doing those consults, man. It's uh, as a matter of fact, I'm talking to I'm, I'm doing the Monday show with Anna as soon as we hang up here. Oh, yeah. I wrote down some notes from someone from yesterday. Uh, a couple of people, they were doing the same thing over and over. So I'll be talking about that on the Monday show. So folks, tune in. And by the way, if you're listening right now, uh, Anna and I will be doing that show at um, six o'clock. I'm sorry, seven o'clock our time, Eastern time. So about one hour from right now, I will be with Anna doing that show. So if you have any questions, send them to Anna through Twitter right now, me and Anna there you on go. Twitter. And uh, we'll get those questions and we'll answer them during the so show. So that'll be this Monday's podcast that airs on Monday, December 14th. Yeah. So if you have streaming live in Facebook world, so but you got to do at me and at Anna, but mostly at Anna because she's the one that's looking at those during the show. Oh, Aren't by you? the way, uh, Dave You're... Dolak is watching. I know you know. I know you love Dave. So, Dave the uh, kayaker, folks, go check out Dave the kayaker. He uh, Dave gave to the first movie, and now we're kayak buddies. I know, right? You you had to move to the East Coast to become kayak buddies, but hey, you know. I couldn't find any friends on the West Coast. Andy didn't want a kayak, yada, yada, yada. Next thing you know, I'm over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, we appreciate you. Welcome to the East Coast, since uh, you're only probably two hours or three hours south of me. So, yeah, thanks for having I, I drove through your area about two weeks ago. I had to go up to New York uh, yeah. to pick something up. Hey, East Coast isn't so bad, right? <laughs> No, I, I like the East Coast. The people seem to be nice. Um, I, I'm enjoying where we are. And um, I think I'll stick around for a while. <laughs> it's cold, but that's about it. Which, by the way, since we're talking live, uh, have they, has, has again, shout out to our wonderful distributors, uh, but has Gravitas given you any pre-order stats updates yet? Are we still waiting for numbers on that? Like how we're progressing? Um, no, they haven't. Um, but I know, you know, it fluctuates. I think right now it's probably in the 100 or 200 range. Okay. It goes down as low as like number 30 on iTunes. And sometimes one time we saw it at number 14, I think, or 12. It fluctuates up and down all day long. So folks, if you were thinking about pre ordering, do it right now, gotcha. right now, while you're listening, you don't go. wait until the end. Um, there it is. Just go there, click on that, get it now. Um, so that it'll just make the numbers jump again. Yeah. Oh, you um, know what, Vinny, since we yeah. live in the real time world here on Facebook, sure. Should we mention what's going to happen this weekend in case people want to, you know, that little promo gravitas thing that might be happening? 
They're, they're talking about doing a little promo. Do I know what it is? Uh, a little discount. Oh, really? oh, oh, yeah, I do know about that. Um, I do. Uh, thank you. Uh, Actually, uh, I, since today's Thursday, I think it launches tomorrow. So, because okay, I okay, cool. All right, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I didn't know that that this was this weekend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, folks, this is not me. This is Gravitas. I, I'm not allowed to do this. They have the movie now. <clears throat> but this weekend, I'm trying to find it. Do you have it there? Do you have what it's going to go down to? Uh, yeah, they're going to drop it from so iTunes, but I just screen share because obviously I already pre bought it. It's normally right. 12 99. Right. They're going to drop it to 6 99 for pre wow. for for the basically the weekend push. I'll, I'm looking to see if it was Monday through Friday. I'm sorry, Friday through Monday. Sorry, Friday through Monday. Or if it's just like Friday through Sunday. I'm looking to check that now. I'm not sure. Yeah, if you could figure that out. I, we thanks for bringing that up. Okay. I never know what what's going. As you know, I, I never know what's going on. Let me see if <laughs> well, I that's can... why you got people like me on your team. So yeah, got to keep a, a finger on the pulse, so to speak. So. I can't, and I don't have my glasses on, so I wouldn't be able to see it. Um, here we go. It'll run from Friday, December eleventh, to Monday, December fourteenth. So there we go. They're dropping it to six ninety nine on iTunes for pre orders. So. Cool. So we'll blow that all. Up. We'll blow that up all over your social media. Yeah, put it all over my social media. Let's get more people to get this movie. And um, look, folks, I appreciate it if you pay full price. But if you want to buy it again for someone else, Christmas gift or whatever, I'm sure that's why they're doing it. Yeah. And it's, by uh, the way, I never know when they're going to do this. I when did we learn about this? Today or yesterday or something uh, like that? Uh, literally, I think I got the email either yesterday or the day before because we just finished working on the graphics for it. So yeah, I was just made made aware of it today. But I didn't know when that started. So I'm glad uh, you brought actually, it up hey, two days ago. Okay. So what is it? Do we know it's Friday through Monday or Sunday? Friday through Friday through Monday. So four days. So I'm uh, sure Andy's laughing right now because he's like, he never knows when our promos are either. You know, he'll probably comment on that. Uh, FYI, Richard Gonzalez says Vinny is the cool Grand Torino. So oh, good. <laughs> it's good to know that there's more than one Grand Torino. I'm the cool version of Grand Torino. Wow. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I, I did something on Twitter the other night that had everyone pause to realize, um, oh, wait, he, he knew something. Uh, someone wanted to learn how to do a superscript onto, you know, you can't do superscript from a telephone right, unless right. you talk it in. And what you would have to say is, let's say you want it to be cubed, you would say superscript three. Or right. yeah, to the third I, power. I remember the cubed terminology. So from yeah. what was that trigonometry, whatever math course was that? Yeah, whatever. And I, I don't know why I knew that. I think I figured it out one day because I went, there's no key for me to hit the superscript. I wonder if I say superscript and sure enough, it's in there. You yeah, just yeah. do it. And uh, or did you teach me that? I, I lose track of all the stuff you, you know, I end up just talking about and trying to hack like now, obviously your new studio upgrade to the Roadcaster Pro. Now I'm your yeah. now I'm your road consultant. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get that Don Coddington um, thing in there and my share, uh, not share. Uh, what is it, man? I feel like a woman. Yeah. Let me see if I could tell me if you can hear this. Let's see if it comes up. No, but I can hear it very far in the distance. So it sounds like it's playing out through a speaker. <laughs> so or you have the volume. There yeah, I had the volume turned. Yeah. But you were able to hear it, right? Yeah, but not loud. So, it's the billionaire yeah. Don Cunningham's <laughs> Friday, five o'clock. Uh, Don <laughs> makes an appearance on the Live the Bill show. This is a this is a first. I mean, when he when you got the kind of money he's got, it's yeah. Well, when you got billions, you got your own. You know, you got your own stinger. You got cameos everywhere. So yeah. he didn't even ask for that one. So no, no, he sent it to me. You know. Oh, oh, by the way, I, you know what? Robin gave you a great plug for the Facebook group that you never started. Uh, Robin never did a consult. She said the Facebook group keeps her on track and all the podcasts. So there's a plug for the podcast. And there's a plug for the Facebook group. Again, yeah. I don't even know who started that crazy, massive, amazing Facebook community. But again, people who are new listening to this, um, what is the actual title? It's it's Vinny, it's Vinny Tauterich's No Sugars, sugar, No sugar, Grain. Yeah. And, and by the way, I knew about it from the beginning. Yeah. Um, it was a guy named Greg Vick. Um, there, there are a few other guys and they said, let's start a Facebook group and with your name and we'll make you one of the administrators, which I still don't know what that means. Uh, and, I'm, I'm um, an administrator too, but I, I, I just step in in case they apps absolutely need me, but you know, yeah, 
Lonnie and the whole crew, they got that place place on lock. I'm Lonnie on. Beauchamp and uh, uh, Megan Hawks and a few other people. Do you know, I think Tallulah's an administrator, yeah, but yeah. I, I can't be everywhere all the time. I mean, I do 260 podcasts per year. Um, I, I do all the other stuff. I do the Adam Carolla show. I do everybody else's podcast. I I'm on Twitter. So I answer, you know, I've, I picked one place and it's Twitter that may change at some point because, you know, as we were figuring out, I'm being shadow banned or something on Twitter for whatever reason. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not political. I don't know what goes on, you know, why they, they do what they do. Sure. Most, most of your fans handle a lot of your healthy debates for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't go after anyone. I just put up information and, you know, I'll go days on end where they'll just, I'll say, wait, I used to get 300 tweets at me per day today. I only got 12. Yeah. Where do they go? Where do they go to? And then people write to me and go, Hey, you know, I can't see your stuff anymore. I'm still, you know, so I don't, I don't know what goes on online and I, I don't care. Um, but I just do what I can do. That's all we can do. Yeah. That's right? why I, I put the movies out and I, I do the podcast. I do what I can, the stuff they can't get to, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, I'll just keep putting out the information where I can. Well, and it's like, you know, if, if what you've helped influence you, Anna, and everybody else over the years was BS, then why would we have like, for example, today's Thursday while we're recording this. So we had yeah. our normal transformation Thursday posts. You, um, people, I think it was like Anthony Allen was the guy we put up today. Like the guy dropped like well over 40 pounds. So you got people sending you their before and afters. So you didn't, I mean, everyone, I think maybe two times we asked people say, Hey, if you got anything good to share, please send them over. But most more often than not, people are just emailing you that in saying, Hey, yeah, check it out. Benny. like, look, what, look what you helped with. And I think that guy wrote to me and said that he's over a hundred, you know, by the time he sent it to us, he was at 40 pounds, but I think he's over a hundred now. Well, yeah, he sent his transmission into us back in April, but we have so many people waiting in the queue that, you know, we're just trying to work our way through. So we're getting closer. Um, yeah. I think he's lost a lot more wait now. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's just amazing. I'm looking down because I'm looking at, at Twitter. Yeah, boom. At, at, um, and Instagram. that's the beauty. Like you don't you you don't have to make any of this up. Like you have innocent strangers out there saying, no, it's not BS. Look what yeah. you know you you all you did was say again, we don't call it a diet, it's a lifestyle, but it's like, hey guys, if you want to eat healthy fats and stop eating inflammatory things like sugars and grains, you might want to give it a shot. Yeah. That simple. Yeah. And it seems to work. Yeah. I mean, apparently, if not thousands of times over. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the crazy part. I mean, you know, when you think about how many times the book has been sold, and how many times the movie has been watched, and, you know, people find us at our companies, and, and those companies are doing well. So we know that there's a fan base, you know, there's, and someone told me if you get a 1000 people in a Facebook group, that's a big group. And I think ours, well over 20,000 in that, that main group. Yeah, 25, 28,000 or something weird like that. So the crazy massive. Like yeah, that. if people are paying attention, and uh, it's all good. It's just yeah. all good. You know? Yeah, like I said, I mean, when you have something uh, fueled, like if your fire, your fame, so to speak, is being fueled by the fire of, of, of fans and people like you don't have to make anything up like these people are giving you their testimonials, their transformations. Um, the research you guys did for fat, the first fat, uh, the, the, the research and the proof. Yeah, find the healthy lifestyles of, you know, ketogenic lifestyles. And, you know, again, healthy fats, fat, at, fat, at, at me being a fat adapted athlete, for example, like, apparently, I should never have tried, you know, doing endurance sports just on olive oil. But right. I've been experimenting with that for almost two to three years now. So it's like, whereas years ago, when I ran my first marathon, I did it with those stupid sugary gels, right? So uh, you don't you don't know until you've no, you have to put in the work, you have to learn, you got to find influencers like you or Anna and other great people out there like, you know, Mr. Carnivore man himself, Sean Baker and all those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it's impressive the level of information that's now available and great documentaries like fat and now fat too, that are just putting the truth out there and saying great here, go watch it. You figure out what you want to do. Right? It's It's your choice. It's your life. So yeah. And you know, look, I, I always say I, I have nothing to sell. If you want to buy my movies, fine. If you want to buy my book, fine. If you want to pay for a consult, fine. But you could get it all for free. 
you know, I've been putting it out there for free for, you know, close to nine years now. And, you know, it, you, you don't need to go pay for anything, it, you know, and a lot of people say, like, yeah, keto, pay me a lot of money. Low carb, pay me a lot of money. I don't have that model. The model is, hey, I'm going to try to help as many people as I can. If I can make enough money to survive through that, I'm going to keep doing it. You know, and I'm very honest about that. You know, um, we tell people every week on my show, you know, click through the Amazon banner. And then Amazon changed the way they were doing things, you know, they, they decided, hey, we're not going to just let these guys get all this money. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was covering everything. Yeah. So Amazon says, hey, we're gonna give you a lower percentage of everything as Andy and I always say Amazon's a love hate relationship. <laughs> We love them. I'm about we hate to experience them. that when I get my book out there because I'm self publishing on Amazon. And now, like, ever since this happening for you the past two months, I'm not looking forward to that part. But it and talk to Anna, man. It is it, it Amazon love hate. And so I just went to the fans and said, Hey, look, we've always had the super fan page up. You know, if, if you feel so inclined, go to the super fan page and just do that. I actually had your site queued up because I was looking at how many shows as of tonight, the live episode, you've already aired 1,730 podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. there become a super fan link right there. So hey, uh, just, oh, I love how you're able to do that. And I can't do anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you know, you could just click on that, you know, people leave, you know, $5, some people do $5 a month, $10, you know, some people do $20. Um, my favorite one is when I, I'll see a number like, um, $57 or $103. And I always get a big smile on my face, not because they're bigger numbers. But it's the number that's the amount of they're giving me a dollar a pound for the way they lost. And that always, it, you know, money comes and goes and I don't need a lot of money to live. I just need enough money to keep all of this running and paying everyone who works on this, right? But man, when I see, you know, one guy once sent me $212. And I wrote to him, and I went 212 because yeah, I lost 212 pounds. Wow. And I know I act like a tough guy. But I just sat there and started thinking about it. I just I, I it makes me sound like a like a, the world's biggest pussy, but I just started weeping. I was like, wow, I'm just putting this information out there. And I'm, a lot of times I think I'm speaking into a void. You know, I talk into the same black mic, you know, it's, it feels like the black hole, yeah, you know, yeah. just talking into this mic. And I've been talking into mics for a lot of years before this back in the 80s, I had a show in New Orleans, on radio called talking fitness. And sometimes you just go, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, and I'm not sure I'm getting through. And then someone writes to you and says 212. You know, I, it sent me $212. And see, that, that's how much weight I lost. And of course, the letter went on, you know, I, I, my fatty liver disease is now gone. I'm not on blood pressure medication. I'm jogging, I'm doing and I sit there and go, wow, wow. So I guess every now and then someone is listening, you know, and I hate getting deep like that on these damn podcasts, but it, it's real. It, it's but just that's, real. that is that's the beauty of that. It is real. Yeah. yeah. And it's cool that you, I, I think I think that's a testament to like, that's why I told you a while ago. And I'll remind you because you've been on my show now five times. It's you are one of my early influencers on whether or not I was going to even turn a podcast on. Wow. Uh, I, and then me, and honestly, I did it because of your story of the book, right? It's like, wait a minute, it's going to take a few years, right? It's going to take time. It's going to take putting in the reps, but it's like, what if my podcast, along with everything else I've done, helps you know me getting into speaking and stuff now too, builds some popularity. And what yeah. if I can put a book out and tell a story, right? So it's like, you've done it. I was like, so there's a, there's a, there's a case study proving it can be done. Yeah, and it's done by others. So it's like, okay, but the biggest thing that I remind people is like, it's gonna take time. Like you can't expect the flash in the pan thing. We talk about this in marketing too. It's like, put in the reps, be consistent, keep going, right? Uh, and to say that black hole is not actually a black hole. Eventually, people are learning from you and, yeah. and hopefully train, changing their lives. So and, and the cool thing that you have, Scott, you know, when I do something online, I, I don't know how to turn on the, the, the computer you know how to do the marketing and the whole thing, you're going to be way more successful than than me, because I don't know how to do any of it. Well, I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> so good luck with that. Yeah, Take yeah. it and run. Young yeah. man. <laughs> well, listen, Vinny, I mean, we've had a blast here. We're now over an hour on the show. 
And we have got to give us some shout outs to your, oh, actually, wow, look at this. Uh, Matt Gustafson commented again. He said, yep, it's real folks. Uh, at six foot five, 430 pounds when I committed to NSNG and lost over 200 pounds and kept it off. It's real, no sugar and no grains. Well, you Was he the guy that sent me the 200 bucks? I don't know. Um, $12? Yeah. Ask him. Well, I, he's I can't listening. remember the guy's I, name now. He's listening to it right now. So if he comments, um, you know, <laughs> we're good to go. And Dave Dolak followed up again, too. He's like, oh, Vinny has a warm, soft underbelly. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, all those genuine testimonials, yet people want to argue it can't work. Yeah, I, I, that's, what, that's what kills me. Yeah, I saw, um, what's her name? Jillian Michaels. The other day on television. I think Dave and I were talking about that over a scotch last week. I think it was Dave, where we were talking. I was like, yeah, Jillian Michaels. It's like, yeah, you know, it's, keto is just a starvation diet or something. And I'm like, come on, you, you know, that's not true. How much are they paying you to say that? Because, right. you know, she's she's bought and sold by by big industries, you know, and you know, they just pay her to say whatever she'll say what she's the equivalent of a, a media whore. She'll say whatever they'll pay her to do. You know, and I, I, and I get it. It's very I mean, when you got big corporations throwing big money at you, it's hard to say no. Right. But that well, comes down yeah. to ethics and what you want to stand for. Right. Take it from me, I, the, the amount of, of money, look, because I, I own the trademark on NSNG, you don't think companies are coming after that going, what do you want? You know, we want to, you know, we want to bastardize it. They don't put it that way, but that's what they want to do. They want to bastardize NSNG the same way um, they did it with paleo, which no one owned or keto, which no one owns, but I own NSNG, right? right. And it's become a big brand. And uh, they can't touch it. They can't touch it. So, you know, they want it. Oh, by the way, Robin commented again for your benefit. Yes, you're talking, but you also lead us to find out for ourselves by introducing us to other leaders in this space and their books and research. That's why, and that was the end of her comment. That's like, shout out to your Friday episodes, right? Yeah. That, I mean, not just Fridays. You brought a lot of great people on. Heck, just fans or success stories on Saturdays too. That's proof in the pudding, so to speak. Even though I don't eat pudding, but you know, it's the, the Friday shows alone uh, have brought amazing influencers. Even I mean, literally, I've over the years when I started growing my show, I would go watch and listen to your podcast, go to your website, and then Google those people and see if I can try and get them on my show. So, um, by the way, Scott, this is for your pudding joke. Ah, there you go. And actually, to be fair. Shout out to your new company. You do have a new recipe out there for, for ultra fat pudding. So to I do I do. And um, I, I'm doing all kinds of stuff with it. The other day, you know, a lot of people put it in their coffee and I've put it in my coffee before a workout and that kind of thing. You know, it's like, Hey, get a little coffee buzz before I get on this, these rollers. I think the rollers are right behind me somewhere. Yeah. I see and that. I was getting, you know, I've, I've put it in my coffee before I've gotten on the rollers and I'm, I'll be on the rollers for 90 minutes or two hours. But the other day I had to do some some yard work. I you know, I had to be outside and trimming trees and doing all this stuff. And it was free. It was it was snowing. It was snowing out and spitting snow and rain. And you know those days, man, you just get chilled to the bone. So I brought an extra hot coffee out there with me. And uh right before I went out, I, I poured one of the uh, ultra fats in there. It kept me going all morning. And by the way, I, I did a quick video and just threw it up, you know, because we do Tuesday tips and yeah. Thursday tips and what have you. And uh you know, by the way, have you seen my Thursday tip yet this week? Is it up yet? Uh, it might be, but I've been getting ready for this show. So I haven't even looked yet. So I'm sure mm -hmm. maybe the team got it up. Yeah. Um, so we see. always do the transformation in the morning. And then obviously, uh, they get their tip up in the afternoon because this late in the week, it's a pure vitamin club tip. So yeah, which got like people who watch that. I mean, yeah, you guys share tips on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So yeah, I can't wait to get into my new gym whenever the house is finished, because I'm gonna start doing a lot of exercise tips from the gym. Yeah. And showing people some of the nuances besides just, you know, I'm going to become my own Jerry to <laughs> you will. Yeah. And yes, the tip is up on pure vitamin club, they just haven't gotten a transfer over to your feed just yet. Um, but I think I told them not to because um, you, that other thing that you put up wasn't quite yeah. there yet. Yeah, but I guess it's a travel tip. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, because I've been traveling by car a bunch. 
Um, can you play it across the thing? How does that work? Can you put it up on the screen? Or? As long while I'm traveling, it's push-ups. There we go. You don't um, want to get on the ground. Let me restart it here. Can we put the? Can we get the video up? Or by car later oh, yeah, because here. of Let's obvious. Both, Let's see if you could do it. Uh, hang on. Let's see how good Scott is. Well, go I, on. I better because I showed you how to do this. <laughs> You'll notice I just did this because I have the same shirt on. Uh, there I go. Share a sound. Boom. Boom. I've been traveling more by car lately because of obvious reasons. I don't want to get onto a plane. Every time I stop for gas, I do some exercise. Sometimes I'll do a few sets of lunges while I'm waiting for it to fill up. The other thing I like to do to keep that blood flowing while I'm traveling is push-ups. You don't want to get on the ground at a gas station. Yeah. So I'll just put the tailgate down on the truck and do a few push-ups, get the blood flowing while I'm waiting for the gas to fill up. Same with the car, you can use the hood. Okay, this is brought to you by purevitaminclub.com. Today is Thursday, and that's your tip. There you go. There you have it. Yeah, you know, I give tips, and uh, sometimes they're, they're wonky little tips like that. And I really do do that, you know, when I stop at the gas station, because, you know, I drive long distances. I only stop to get gas. I'll go in while it's filling up. I'll run to the bathroom really fast. I usually travel with all the coffee I'm going to drink. You know, I don't drink as much coffee when I drive as you would think, but it's uh, it's there next to me in, in a thermos type thing. So I don't have to go buy their cheap, crappy coffee or stop at a crappy Starbucks. Yeah, those uh, you guys taught me a lot about coffee thanks to working with Pure Coffee Club. I yeah. never realized the different thresholds and the quality and oh, wow. Yeah, it, it really does. It, it all changes a lot. And I can, I can never drink, uh, you know, fast food coffee, so to speak, or the gas station coffee or the truck stop coffee again. It's it's swill. <laughs> it is. Uh, but I find this important to get some blood flowing. Look, you're not doing a workout. It's just getting blood flowing. And at one stop, I'll do, you know, because you're on the tailgate of a truck, I'll do 50 or 60 of those, you know, just to, it, it really wakes you up. Sometimes I'll do something as simple as, you know, because every gas pump is raised up on about a four or five inch platform. I'll just, I'll just do a bunch of, you know, Oh, like half raises? Half raises. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll do, you know, 50, 60 on each leg. You had a, you gave me a huge flashback just now because I looked down because I noticed when people wear different things and right. you had your logger heel quality boot on. Yeah. So and you then, were doing that gave me flashbacks to, well, basically 11 years ago when I served as a wildland firefighter out West, every time we were driving to another state, to another big wildfire, because I was on a hotshot crew, our fire boots had the big heels. Yeah, but we would not do those push-ups. They made us do the other way around. So we had the big bumpers in the back of the trucks. We had to put our feet up on that and go down and actually oh, wow. touch the ground, like you said, not to do and do our push-ups that way. So that was their way of keeping us fit on the way to a fire. And any of nice. these push-ups or burpees, they pretty much would find a way to work them into our day. <laughs> By the way, those boots are made by by that company. Uh, they're handmade Knicks boots, yep. and, and Knicks make. I think we talked about that on another I, podcast. I, I yeah. have the their, their model is actually called the high end model is called the Hot Shot model. I, I have a pair that the, the original pair that I fought fire with. I had them completely rebuilt, so they look uh, they look brand new because they when you buy good quality boots, they will do that. You can ship them back and they'll rebuild them. And, and mine were um, you know sized to my foot. You know they, they'll do a custom move because I have a very high end step. And they made a boot and people will say to me, you wear those even when you're not doing any work, like when you're not with your chainsaw, you're doing, and, you know, yeah, because they're, they're made for my foot, they're so comfortable, and I could fit a nice wool sock underneath when it's cold here and the whole thing. And I put them on when I go shooting in the morning. I wish I could have known they did the custom fitting back then, because I was, I was taught by one of my squad bosses to lace them all the way up because they were the high boots too. They were yeah. up, up my calf muscle. Yeah. He's like, go hike into a lake, hike back out, and keep hiking until they're dry. Yeah. Like, you might get some blisters. He's like, but as the leather dries, you're stretching it while you're hiking, and it's going to start molding to your foot. And that's how I fit my boots to my feet. Uh, it's and Nick's will tell you not to do it that way. You know, we used to do that with cowboy boots. You know, you, we'd buy the cowboy boots and fill up the tub and just put them on, step into the tub, wait until your feet were completely soaked get out of the tub and then you know just wear them until they dried and when you took them off your feet were like hamburger but the next time you put the boot on it was molded to your foot yep 
Yeah. And again, well, to be fair, do yours have a liner? Do you have any insulation in yours? In, in my, no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't do any liner. In my yeah, and mine are 100% cowhide. There's no, yeah. I say there's no fluff. It's because again, that would catch on fire. So it was, it's just pure, legit cowhide, man. Like you said, yeah. it's a really good pair of woolies. Uh, that's actually where you invested our next amount of money. You bet four or $500 for a pair of boots and you made sure you had really good socks. So, yeah, the so. best socks. And, you know, with hiking and mountain climbing and glaciers and the whole thing, you could spend all the money in the world on glacier boots. If you don't have the right socks on, you're dead. You're dead in the water. Scott, it's it's 530. I have Anna to do. We're going to have to uh, wrap know, it up so in a little bit. You go because you're on a less than 30 minute countdown. It's 630 here, East Coast. So, yeah. And you got you have her at seven, right? Yeah, we, we start at seven and I need to go make more coffee, more pure coffee club dot com. Yeah, like, coffee club. I'm uh, yeah. finishing the current Explorer as we speak. So we are, as a matter of fact, I'm sampling uh, the new stuff. Yeah, you know, I got to do a few taste tests tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we're going to be putting the new one out soon. And I also and just ordered perfect. another mini case of if you can remember, if you guess which Explorer was so popular that you still have extra stock of, and I just ordered like four to six more bags of it. It just arrived. So I'm going to say it was the um, the uh, the whole the the the, um, the Ethiopian. Um, it was one that was just the, the whole bean. Um, what was that one called? So, kind of like blueberries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the yeah. name of that one? Peaberry. Peaberry. I, I kept saying the whole bean. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole bean. Like, that stuff was like crack to me. So. <laughs> My friend, that, my friend I asked a photo of it. He was like, why are you buying so much coffee? I'm like, it is amazing. I didn't realize we had any of that left. Oh, you got to snatch it up. It's, it's, it's running out. Ask Andy. So, yeah, I'm going to get some. Andy sending me a big supply anyway. Yeah. My, my wife was like, why are you, why did you order four more bags of coffee? I'm like, listen, you got to get it while you can. All right. The tea berry is unbelievable. It really is. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I might give a couple away as a holiday gift, but I'm I wouldn't. selfish and not do it. Unless I'm on your holiday list and I own the company, I wouldn't give it to anyone else. Well, well, listen, buddy, I do want to let you go so you can get back and, and have a great time with Anna, like you always do. And tell Anna, obviously, I said hello. Um, but yeah. And thanks again, by the way, for the cameo the other week. I just jumped out on the Monday show for you. Actually, I think you and I have an outstanding show that we recorded like a month ago. So I'm somewhere mm -hmm. in your pending lineup. So for your show. Yeah, that's a Saturday. Did we do a Saturday show? I think that was going to be a Saturday. Is Tallulah listening to this right now? Is she watching? I didn't see her queue up, so that never really came up. Media, that so. show never came up. Oh, no, I know we recorded one, so I didn't see it come up yet. But you have some. Hey, favorite. Can, can you write you write to Tallulah and ask when it's coming up? Yeah. Because I'm 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 going to jump right onto the Anna podcast when yeah. when I hang up here. Well, listen, I, I always ask Mike. You've been on so many times, my guest co-host. You've shared so much today, and obviously, we're so excited for Fat Two. I'm going to screen share while I say this, but Vinny, I mean, all encompassing is there a like all encompassing message you want to leave behind for people that are hearing this and just a life lesson, a legacy message, whatever you want to leave behind for people, because there's so much about you, but I mean, is there anything that sums it all up? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've used this uh, before and I'll use it again. And it means more now than ever. You know, I always say, take the garbage out, you know, just take the garbage out. And what that means is whenever you see something needs to be done, don't wait until someone else tells you to do it. Just do it. Look, we're living through a different time right now in the world. And we need to help each other more than at any other time. Um, I'm here to help you guys. I'll do whatever I can to help anyone. You know that. And, and I won't stop doing that. But if you have a friend in need for any reason whatsoever, and you have the capacity to do anything to help, even a stranger, just go do it. Go do it because it really matters nowadays. Well said, sir. Well, uh, listen, hang tight. And I'll give you a proper goodbye as I hang it up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Vinny Tortorich, again, filmmaker of Fat a Documentary and now Fat a Documentary 2. I just screen shared the iTunes page again. If you're watching this live, just hang tight till tomorrow because you're going to be able to save six bucks off the price from $12.99 down to $6.99 for your pre order. So you'll be able to watch it before anybody else on January 1st, 2021. If you go to VinnyTortorich.com, everything's there. The fan thing he talked about, the super fans, the banner for Fata Documentary 2, the Amazon links. I use them all because uh, I'm not just a fellow podcaster. I'm, I'm a fan. All right. I support everything. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. Vinny Tortorich helped us do that today. So again, please support Fata Documentary 2. Go check it out. Go visit VinnyTortorich.com. You'll find everything linked there. And again, take advantage of that discount this weekend, people. 
it's a, it's going to be a worth a watch. I'll tell you, because the first fat was amazing. So again, thanks for tuning in. And remember, you two can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.